Please subscribe to hear more Cryptid Tales. If you like the story you heard, give us a thumbs up and feel free to leave us a comment. If you'd like to hear your own Cryptid Encounter on Cryptid Tales, send us an email at cryptidtellsmel at gmail.com. I have always been a believer of Bigfoot since the first time I watched the Patterson film when I was a child. After seeing the famous film, I would watch all of the Bigfoot shows that I could get my eyes on, and even enjoyed watching the Bigfoot episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man. But eventually, time did its thing, and I grew up, forgetting all about the legend and putting my belief in Bigfoot behind me. But one day, Bigfoot found its way back into my life, in such a way I would have never imagined as a child. It was 1998, and I was married. This particular morning was no different than any other morning. The only major difference is on that day, I found myself arguing with my wife. Nothing major or important. Just a typical squabble like all married couples have from time to time. I was worked up pretty good at the time, so I went outside to cool off and settle my nerves with a smoke. Still fuming from the argument, I lit my cigarette and took a drag off it. As I exhaled a rolling cloud of smoke, I got the sudden strange feeling that I was not alone. I looked up and saw someone, or at least I thought it was someone at first, walking past my house. This wouldn't be a big deal to some people, but for me, it was strange. This was early morning. The sun hadn't even peaked up over the horizon just yet, and we lived in a rural area. I mean, we had a few scattered neighbors somewhat close by, but you didn't really see them, especially not outside my house before dawn. As this stranger walked by, they stopped just past the telephone pole that stood out front of our property at the edge of the yard. They just stood there staring at me. It was only a few seconds, but long enough that it felt awkward and made me feel uneasy. I realized how weird this all was as I took another drag off my smoke. I decided to find out just who this person was and where exactly were they headed. By the time I made it out to the end of my driveway, they were gone. I looked around and couldn't see them anywhere. Not that I had just kept my eyes glued to them the entire time I was walking out there, but the sudden disappearance gave me the jitters. I stood at the telephone pole where I had seen them and noticed a smell. It smelled something awful and just hung in the air around the pole. I decided it was best not to press the search of this mystery person any further, so I turned and headed back in the house. That following afternoon, my son was outside riding his bike around our property. I was just standing there watching him, not really thinking about anything, and especially not my morning visitor. Then something happened that caught my attention, and a flood of realization came over me. My son was out riding his bike past that telephone pole where the thing had been standing that morning. After my son rode past the pole several times, I realized that the thing I had previously thought was a person was at least twice the height of my son, who was just at four foot tall. This thing had to be seven to eight foot tall at the least. At the time it was standing there, I didn't even think about it. I didn't realize how large it was, but now I'll never forget the feeling I had that day. Each year, 
my family likes to get together somewhere and have a small reunion. Nothing fancy or anything, just a way for us to spend a few days together as a family. Each time we do this, we try to go to a different location that's convenient for everyone, but someplace we've never been before. This particular time, we had all agreed that we would go camping. We found a spot that was close to town, but still out in the wilderness a bit. It would seem like we were out in the wild at least, which the kids would love, but we'd still be 20 minutes or so from the nearest Walmart, which all the parents would love. The place we went, which I'll keep secret, is a popular national park, even though it is a smaller one. There are lots of great places to swim and really nice campsites. The best part is that it was centrally located for all of us, even the ones coming in from out of state. We got there early on a Friday and set up our tent. I have to admit, I snore pretty loudly. So my wife wanted to put our tent out a ways from the center of camp back towards the tree line. She was afraid the others would complain. Other family members made their way in throughout the day and we helped each new arrival set up their tents around the campsite. The tents made sort of a half circle around the campfire area, except for our own, which was facing away from the others and was out by the woods. By the time the last of the relatives arrived and set up camp, the sun was already going down. We made hot dogs and sat around the fire, soon realizing it was putting off way more heat than we needed. Eventually it burned its way down, and fireflies lit up the skies around us. That night, I had a hard time falling asleep. I was used to a nice soft bed at home, and the sleeping bag I was laying on wasn't quite cutting it. I sat up, slipped my shoes on, and headed out of the tent. As far as I could tell, everyone else was fast asleep. I took a seat by the fire, which by now was no more than a few glowing embers. I threw a few pieces of dried bark on top and poked at it with a stick until a small flame started to flicker. The camp chair actually seemed more comfortable than the sleeping bag and hard ground for some reason, and the longer I sat there, the heavier my eyelids seemed to get. I had just about nodded off when something, I didn't know what it was, but something howled, and I nearly fell out of the chair. Whatever it was, it was loud, and it wasn't far away. At first, I thought a coyote, or a dog maybe, but it sounded too deep, and honestly, it didn't sound like any canine I had ever heard. A few seconds later, my brother-in-law unzipped his tent and came piling out, headed towards the fire. Did you hear that? he asked. I nodded in the affirmative. What was it? he asked as he threw a handful of small sticks on the fire. I have no idea. We sat there at the fire together for a few more minutes, listening, but whatever it was remained quiet. The next day, we all got up and headed out to explore the park. My brother-in-law told me later on that one of my cousins had mentioned hearing the thing the night before and said that they thought sticks or something kept falling and hitting their tent. But when they got up that morning, they had looked and there were no tree limbs above their tent. At the time, I wrote it off as bugs flying into their tent or landing on it but now, I'm not so sure. Other than coming back for lunch, we spent the day away from the campsite and out hiking and exploring the park. Everyone kind of did their own thing and agreed that we'd meet back at the camp when it got dark. We were the first ones back to camp. 
As I got out of the car, I thought to myself how dark it was and noticed that nobody else was in that part of the park camping except us. My wife started cleaning up around the picnic table. It looked like maybe raccoons had visited our site while we were all gone and scattered stuff everywhere. While she did that, I piled up some wood and got a good fire going. My brother-in-law pulled up with his bunch next. We all took a seat at the picnic table and waited for the others to get there. My wife got up and said she was going to get her jacket out of the tent. A few seconds later, she came scurrying back to the picnic table and grabbed my arm. Something is in the tent, she said, in a very serious tone. Me and my brother-in-law just looked at her. I'm serious. I heard it move, she said, raising her voice. It's probably some of the kids playing a prank. They must have gotten back before us. I stood up, followed by my brother-in-law, and we walked towards our tent at the back of the camp. As we got closer... We could hear someone inside the tent moving around. My brother-in-law put his hand in front of me, motioning for me to stop, and then pointed at the tent. You could see the tent shake as whatever it was bumped the walls and the top of the tent from the inside. I think we both started to realize this wasn't someone playing a prank. We slowed our steps and quietly approached the back of the tent. Our shadows started to climb up the back of the tent cast by the campfire behind us. That's when I realized everything had gotten quiet and still inside the tent. All of a sudden, something came busting out of the front of the tent. We both nearly fell backwards from being startled by the sudden eruption of this thing as it took off away from us towards the woods. At first, I thought it was a man dressed in some sort of light-colored jumpsuit with a hood over his head. Then I noticed that this jumpsuit seemed, well, hairy, and I realized this person was covered in hair and was completely naked. No sooner had I realized this, the thing was crashing into the tree line, dodging trees left and right as it went. The thing was incredibly fast, like an animal-type speed. If you can imagine a deer or something running full speed through the woods, that's how this thing moved, not like a person at all. I don't even know if a human could run that fast through the woods, in the dark without slamming into trees or tripping and falling. But within seconds, this thing was completely gone from sight. I looked over at my brother-in-law, who was just staring into the woods with his mouth hanging open in shock. I looked back towards the woods, and there was no sign or sound of the thing anywhere. I turned towards my wife, who had stayed by the picnic table. She had a puzzled look on her face, and said, Was that a person? I couldn't even answer. I didn't have an answer. I didn't know what it was. We made our way back to the fire, and my brother-in-law threw on more logs, growing the fire high. Others pulled in, and as everyone arrived, we excitedly told them our story of the intruder we had seen. Honestly, it wasn't until one of the kids overheard us talking and asked, Was it a Bigfoot? That's when I realized what we had seen. My wife refused to sleep in the tent that night and I was perfectly fine with it. We spent the night in the car. The next day, all of us packed up. My stomach did flips as I walked up to our tent and ducked inside. I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I thought some sort of hair-covered monster was going to be inside waiting for me or something. Our stuff had been moved around, but everything seemed okay. I don't know why it chose to go into our tent or what it was looking for. I've never been able to get the event out of my head. 
I think about it every time someone talks about camping or a trip takes me through the woods. I wonder how many of them are out there, sneaking around campsites at night, and nobody even knows it. But if it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone.